Islam. So the meta sutta. This is what should be done by one who will skill in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech. Humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, not busy with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, <clears throat> not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety. May all beings be happy. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be happy. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as a mother protects with her life her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, free from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection this is said to be the sublime abiding by not holding to false views. The pure-hearted one, having clarity of vision, being free from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much. Ah, that yeah, felt so nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this chanting is actually very powerful, especially when you open your heart and then actually get to feel it. And then always that last kind of verse, 
the pure hearted one, having clarity of visions, being from, free from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. Always oh, makes me very happy right there. <laughs> so, I always like to open our, you know, maybe our session with uh, any questions. Do you guys have any topics you want me to talk about? Yeah, any particular? Yeah, actually, ask for a topic later. Shall we yeah. ask for a topic? Hmm. Is there anybody who's got a topic? That yeah, something in mind. About? Hmm. Okay, if not, I guess... Yeah, just, just give them a look. Sure, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, somebody answered this guy. Sky. Um, oh, Sky. I like a topic on family, love, and guilt, and obligation. Oh. Where you, where you have to... respectfully Sorry. understand your family, yeah. even when their behaviors are so against everything you are trying to do with the Buddha. Uh. And they put guilt on you when you're not there. I don't even know how to express it in a question. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> yes, that is a very, it's not a very easy thing. Because family is so very close to you. Yes, I know you're checking. Yeah, I know. So again, our training is what Ajahn Brahm is. Can you make peace with that? Even though despite what they're doing, you know, trying to put pressure on you, perhaps. Is that what I'm thinking? Yes. So And then they try and go this, this way, and then you prefer to go that way. But unfortunately, that's how the world works. You know, people have different opinions, different thinkings, different views. <laughs> unfortunately, if we... If exactly every single one of them, like Chris, you know, Gloria, Sky, and then all of, all of us, you know, going the same direction, the Buddha's kind of teaching and kindness and compassion, which is actually, it makes sense to everyone, but for some odd reason, you know, people go the other way instead of kindness, compassion. Well, I think they're trying to do their best, but unfortunately, you know, because of conditions, maybe family situations, there are so many different factors, and then, and always the guilt. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it's very difficult, you know, it's guilt toward oneself. It's not your fault, you know, but still, you have that guilt. I, you know, that's the thing. Very unusual, isn't it? It's not your fault, but it's, you <laughs> direct that guilt to yourself because you care about it's them. Like and then, years. Yeah, I know, it's just... <sighs> that's why, again, being for, free from all sense desire is not born again to this world. This one world is enough, unfortunately, so yeah. But excellent, Sky, excellent experience. That's quite normal, typical. So just, just hang in there, <laughs> hang tight, and join, you know, join us every week. And then, you know, all the monks and everything. We always care about you, you know, you can always ask us questions. Are you here in Perth or somewhere else? Okay. South Florida. Oh, Florida, okay. So we have, I think, quite a few. I, I, uh, Venerable, I just received a text two seconds before I came in. Right, yeah. And, my, and the person I'm talking about right. sent a text. Mm. I can't believe you abandoned me at this time of my life. All right, okay. Well, your training my can... My heart yes, I... is hurting yeah. for her. But yeah. I can't witness. Right. I can't witness. Mm-hmm. Well, at least you're with I guess us. Physical. Yes. Physical aversion. Yes, I know. Trembling. Yes, I know. So thank you for sharing, Sky. So thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we can talk about more about that later. Yeah, as well. And also, yeah, just take it easy. You know, we have a group, a great group. I don't know how many people are right on. Right, it's 14 people. So this is a great, you know, set of group of people here. So just. Take it uh, easy with this. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, then we've got yeah. 51 people in this evening. Oh, oh so I'm looking at chat. Sorry, I'm looking at this. 51 guys following the Buddha's direction. So you can just take it easy now. So you can just, yeah, have your cup of tea, whatever you're having tea in Florida. I think it's like, what time is it now? 7 a.m.? 8? 7? Yeah, so nice, yeah. And then we also have. You know, people from quite a few from the U.S. as well. So yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that's nice. 
<laughs> yeah. So just take it easy. Yeah, just like yeah, definitely for sure. Okay. Okay. For me, I don't have a family here. So okay. Sorry, Chris. No, it's okay. Go ahead, Venerable. Yes. So I have that separation. So I have that privilege. You know, I can live by myself. <laughs> but remember, I have, we have. 25 other monks, male monks, you know, they have their own ego, so it's quite a different challenge just then, you know, <laughs> we're actually a bigger family, so it's quite interesting, but we always try to follow the Buddhist teaching, for sure, you know, sometimes we irritate each other, we, what can you do, we share ablution blocks, share our shower blocks, you know, people will like to keep things clean, some people like to keep things messy, uh, so, yeah, welcome to life, Sky, <laughs> what can you do? Oh, sure. Not nearly so bad. Yeah, it's, if you think about it, yeah, you have that perspective. Ajahn Brahm has like this simile. <clears throat> so if you put your hands close by, you can't see anything here. See? But if you put it over here, you can see, you know, it's not so bad. So the thing is that, that context. So maybe that, you know, maybe 10 minutes ago you had that text, but it's okay, now it's over. So that was in the past. So again, it's just a matter of training. The training of making peace, being kind, be gentle. I think I always repeat that every single time I come here. But that's what it is. The only thing needs to be trained. <laughs> Aside from that, yeah, nothing else. Even meditation, those blisses uh, moments, just that's it. That core teaching like that, yeah. Hmm. Everything else that's just comes true. naturally. I had a beautiful mm. meditation mm. last night and slept mm. well. So there is a lot to be said yeah. about a beautiful meditation. Yeah, and then you're always in control of that attitude. The, the world outside, your family, whatever, uh, relationship, you know, jobs, bosses, it's always out of your control. But this attitude, this motivation, where you uh, think, where your mind is coming from. Yeah. So making peace. If you have that peace all the time, that kindness, that gentleness, that patience, well, you can take anything as <laughs> You can make your mind so great, so unlimited, make it as, yeah, make it a Buddha's mind. And that's it. It's not, it's a very simple training, but it, but we always forget, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. So just be patient, Sky. Just, you know, yeah, just really on and so on. You're doing great, by the way, for sharing. And then I hope you feel a bit more calm, more relaxed, and yeah. And that's it. That's the only training. Just relaxing and put some space. Oh, yeah. To yeah. Mm -hmm. Not so difficult. Okay. And also... Thank you. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Also, anyone else have something in mind? Topic? Yes, or if uh, no uh, two people have asked if you would speak on acceptance. Acceptance, that's my favorite. <laughs> because acceptance goes with the Metta Sutta as well. Acceptance is basically another way to say uh, loving kindness, opening the door of your heart. Basically, opening your heart to the world, opening the heart to your the text, the relationship whatever but it's always the problem is always ill will it's the wanting the craving because the buddha always says like two main hindrances the first one the wanting in in terms of the five uh, to the world so the wanting you send what, what you want in the world and the second is always the ill will so people for some reason always focus on the wanting you know the cravings and all that because that's a bad part actually it's not so, so bad actually and especially in the monastery because you know want some food whatever you know, on the chat it's not so bad but the one that always disrupt the community is always ill will but if you notice people always you know a lot of the monks they always focus on the wanting they don't want to talk to ill will for some odd reason <laughs> but for me i love to focus on ill will because that's the key that's like the linchpin of the you know the practice and that goes with acceptance if you can accept anything, then ill will cannot have a hold in that heart. And if there's no ill will, there's no need for wanting, that craving for the mind to go out here and there. But again, the training is that, just recognize that ill will. And then you have to be honest that there's ill will in the mind. Because a lot of them, I would say monks and, and um, people as well, they don't want to admit that there's ill will in the mind. They think, so, oh, yeah, everything is okay. But the key training is to recognize that ill will. that 
that bit of tension in the mind. That, that means like um, there's all ill will, there's like a discontent, and then that acceptance, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Once you open your heart uh, to, uh, to the world and then to that ill will, and to the mind going crazy, and to the family going crazy, everything, and then, yeah. Oh, what can you say? All you get is bliss. <laughs> bliss, and then the one thing disappear. So those two hindrances that blocks the way to deep meditation, which I think some of you are interested in, to that stillness, that bliss, disappear. And then all you have to do is just, uh, just keep disappearing, vanishing. And then, yeah good things happen. And then you'll see what the Buddha was teaching about, you know, like, uh, yeah, so many beautiful things that, yeah. And then you don't need, yeah, you don't need monks coming here, <laughs> the Omnia group, because you have everything, you know, that bliss, that, uh, that kindness in your heart. And then that's a beautiful thing. And then each one of you, each one of 52 participants able to do that, because it's a simple training. Just recognize ill will and accept it. So you recognize ill will attention, just accept it. And then that's the training. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you. I have some topics to talk about because I just attended Ajahn Brahmali's retreat. And then, but this is great. So I prefer, you know, getting you know off off the cuff topics. So did you say there's another one? I can answer that as well. Uh, no, there were two there on uh, acceptance. Oh, two on acceptance, okay. Is there anybody else who would like to unmute um, and... Uh... Yeah, could I ask a question, Chris? Of a course, topic? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Ha I'd like to ask you that... Uh, now, I've been talking to lots of monastics. I had a health diagnosis right. of um, lung cancer. And mm. one of the monastics talked about forgiving, forgiveness... Mm. This is why he's hearted meditation, isn't it? So forgiving the tumour for the suffering it's caused. So I forgive. Wow. I know it's That's fun. amazing. I loved it. No, no, yeah. I loved it. I thought yeah. that was brilliant. Yeah. So the practicing. So my question, yeah, is like practicing verbalizing it, and even if you don't feel like it, and then and then one moment you might feel it. Right. The actual forgiveness. <laughs> um, uh, I'm autistic, so I find that quite difficult anyway, the whole no process problem. of that. But I, I get, it resonates with me completely. So my talk, I would ask you sort of skill sets on forgiveness in general, I suppose. Again, forgiveness, yeah. loving kindness, and an acceptance is all the same. It's just different terminology, but actually it, it, it's basically converges in things opening up, your mind's opening up. And then there isn't a person anymore, there isn't a Nikki from Cornwall, UK. It's just, mm -hmm. just another person, another mind, another great mind. So once that mind just opens up. So the training is that, just that way. So how do you feel expensive? So that's the key. That is accept, yeah, exactly, <laughs> open up. I like that. <laughs> Woof, yeah. So that is like Not opening up, like accepting, that. yes, exactly, yes. That is an excellent simile. Yeah, so you're closing up like this. Mind's yeah, tensing up. So it's just a matter of just experimenting what accepting forgiveness is. Um, yeah. So, and then how many times should we forgive? Ajahn Brahm, this is like my favorite quote anyway. So how many times should we forgive? One more time. <laughs> so basically, never stop you know, forgiving, never stop accepting, never stop loving kind. Yeah. 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 Thank you, yeah, no problem. My pleasure, Nikki. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, yes, we have a couple here. Sure. Um, here's a comment from someone uh, who'd like you to, to comment on it. Sure. Ego like to manipulate uh, to, to its advantages. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to keep our egos in check right. and why we think the way we do. Right. And then do we accept it? Oh, definitely. If not, you try to shut it off, see what happens. You know, the mind just tensing up. So if you can say, oh, that's people being manipulative, so okay, accept it. 
And then after a while, they just start quitting. <laughs> That's what happens to me anyway. It's like, oh, this guy is actually quite unusual. So it's maybe they want to play with your minds or whatever. But I think once you start accepting your mind turning great, they kind of get confused. That's what happened to Ajahn Brahm. They, yeah, they just, Ajahn Brahm just have fun with it. You know, people trying to, okay, try to go this way. Ajahn Brahm, well, Ajahn Brahm, go this way or that way. But perhaps you're mentioning maybe someone a bit more devious, whatever. But again, same thing. You just have to make your mind larger than theirs, unfortunately. So that's another training as well. It's another accepting, another forgiveness, another understanding as well. It's just their mind is very close, so they're trying to manipulate others. So they get their, I guess, their joy from whatever, so I'm not too sure what's going on. So the, your, your training is just, yeah, just to accept it. It's just the world, you know, doing their thing. That what they think is happiness, whatever, manipulating other minds. But yeah, you don't have to take that by accepting it. Say, okay, so thank you for uh, saying all this, but it's okay. So I'll just go a different direction, the Buddha's way anyway, which is acceptance and forgiveness. I hope that's okay with you. So if I don't play your game, so yes, sorry about that. And then just, yeah, be kind to the person. And that's it. See what happens, yeah. Hopefully that works. And then, yeah. And then, so you don't have to tense. And then the person might also understand the Buddha's teaching as well. So a double whammy. So great job. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that and, helps. And um, someone else would like you to comment on Anika. On what? I'm sorry? Anika as in uh, impermanence. Oh, impermanence. Oh my yeah. goodness. I did only have seven minutes. <laughs> but it's okay. Impermanence. Impermanence is not <laughs> one minute. <laughs> uh, Ajahn Brahmali, in his sutta class, we talk about one time contemplation about the Buddha. I thought it would only take him maybe two minutes. It took him an hour. So if I have Anicca, maybe I can take... Uh, can I talk about 10 hours? <laughs> Anicca should be quick. So it's very impermanent. So basically, at the very basic, things are so unsure. People are always trying to find security in the world, right? So each one of you, Sky in the US, you probably, that relationship, you want to find security. That's why you keep that person, you know, relationship. Nikki, that lung cancer, you want to maybe some security in that diagnosis that, you know, will disappear. But fortunately, thanks, so. I'm so unsure, so Anicca. And then what can you do? Accept it again, be open, and it make your mind great. So lung cancer, you know, bad relationship, it's not a big deal because your mind's always greater than that, yeah. So basically, that's the key of Anicca. So Anicca, if you use it, a, perceive it in a correct way, that thinks us unsure, that it can lead to bliss, definitely, because anicca also means that that lung cancer can also vanish, it's, it's impermanent. And that relationship sky, it can turn really well, you just don't know. So just be patient, be patient and be forgiving and then be accepting. And lung cancer will be okay, that's an excellent learning yeah, lessons for you for accepting. That's why you can, yeah. You're great right now, Nikki. So you understand, you know, what it feels like to be have that kind of uh, disease, and then you can, you know, relate to people with that. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's the very basic one for in terms of understanding the world. But Anicca, in deep down, it's basically the mind and the body, and you can't rely on anything, unfortunately. Trying to find security in the world, you know, finding health in a relationship, but it's always, yeah, always unsure. <laughs> I always see people, you know, friendships over 20 years, only just a slight kind of, you know, words, whatever, uh, harsh words, and then, yeah, they, the, that friendship disappeared. It happens to Ajahn Brahm with the bhikkhuni ordination. Um, you know, Ajahn Brahm and then the second monk, Ajahn Yana, I don't know if some of you might know. They've been great friends, you know, like Ajahn Brahm's been the abbot, and then, and then Ajahn Yana, the second, yeah been friends for 20, 30 years, relationships, so it's so unsure. And they, they're always the best of friends. And then what happened? And then these are monks, you know? <laughs> they know, they, they understand the concept, but for some reason, friction, and then happens, and then they split. So things happen. So I always accept that the greatest of friendships, you know, the greatest of health, you know, when you're young, you know, 10, 17, 18, I don't think any of you, 17, 18, yeah. So you lose everything, yeah. Unfortunately, and that's the training as well. So you need that forgiveness, that acceptance. If not, 
the anicca will overpower you and then lead you to depression. I think you know all that stuff, you know, that yucky feeling. But you have that mind great, no problem. <laughs> just take it as it is, you know. It's just the world, you know, being unsure, being anicca, being impermanent, it's not, nothing secure. Mm -hmm. And there's a great sutta, if you guys love the sutta, that's called Ratapala Sutta. So you can check it out in Majjhima Nikaya. And it's basically a, a young man trying to ordain, but basically the, the parents just uh, don't let him ordain. And then, but at one point, just the parents let him go, and then, yeah, he became a great monk, and then he has this discourse to this, to this king, and then you can check it out. Ratapala Sutta, but I'm not Ajahn Brahmai, so I can't quote you the number, but Jimanikaya has earned this number. But anyway, anyway, we can talk about it later, which is a great, great sutta. Just talks about the world being so unsure, you no know, refuge, the health, and everything. Oh, I know. I wish everyone here kind of lived like a million years, but unfortunately, <laughs> you know, and then the greatest of health as well. But yeah, what can we do? The only thing you can do is make peace, be kind, be gentle with old age, sickness, and yeah, on death, finally. And if you can accept death, old age, and sickness, wow, you guys are doing great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Venerable. Sure, no uh, problem. Sand Sandra would like to unmute and speak directly with you, Venerable. Hi, Sandra. Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question or topic is about uh, uh, mindfulness trainings, mm -hmm. and uh, I found that uh, I'm getting better and better with drowsiness and dullness. Excellent, yeah. But uh, my question is how to find like a balance between uh, giving too much energy to, um, let's say, situational awareness when yeah. I'm not meditating, yeah. Yeah. and to avoid being restless because there is, I find that. Ah. I find myself restless because I'm giving too much energy to exactly uh, be mindful at everything, and that well, I don't don't feel great about it. So, uh, so you recognize the problem with restlessness and the tenseness, right? You know why the reason why that happens? Because you forget the kindness. So be kind. Right. So and then you can always forget that mindfulness. The kindness is more important. When there's uh, kindness, there's mindfulness as well. So focus on the kindness and the acceptance and try that because the mindfulness, unfortunately, the mindfulness by itself, it's because the, most people use mindfulness with willpower. What you need is actually mindfulness and kindness. Ajahn Brahm called it kindfulness. So have you heard about that term? Yeah. So you don't, don't forget when you talk about mindfulness, there always has to be kindness because if not, you have uh, mindfulness and willpower because you're trying to focus on one thing which the mind won't do because you realize the mind is not yours. You try your best, right? And it, oh, you get some more time. It's like, how come the Buddha keep teaching this mindfulness method that which is uh, stressing me out? Unfortunately, it's not the correct way. So you forget that kindness. And that's also another kind of Ajahn Brahm kind of breakthrough. Yeah, just put a bit of kindness there. And then if it's too tense, yeah, just stop. It's okay. You don't have to be mindful all the time because the mind wants to do its thing and all that. Yeah. Remember, the mind's out of control. If the mind's out of control, you try to mindful it this way, mindful it that way, and then try to be kind to this person, that person, it's okay. Sometimes if you lose your kindness, it's also acceptable. So don't worry, people. Yeah. So you guys are, yeah, 53 people now. Okay. Yeah, you guys are doing great. Joining here, going to Buddhist teaching and all that cool stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Um, and, what would you like to do now, Venerable? Would you like to take another comment? Sure. Or? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, if people's okay with okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The process of accepting our condition, like health, family, and general conditions of life. Can mm. you make some comments on this, please? Oh, I th uh, okay. So, um, yeah, sure. So I thought, um, uh, accept. Uh, the process of accepting your conditions, for example, your health, your family, and the general conditions of your life. Mm -hmm. Basically, if that happens properly... Acceptance. Okay, so just, uh, just in general. So basically, acceptance, 
how do you know if the acceptance works, right? So um, this is all, what I'm saying is all great, you know, like all words and then it makes perfect sense. But how do you know it works? So the Buddha also says something like this. What is the Dhamma? What is the Vinaya? What is the teaching? What is the proper? How do you know it's working correctly, you know, acceptance? Um, I think you all understand kindness, loving kindness. But is it, is it the right kind of what the mind is looking for? So it should lead to peace. So if you notice in your mind everything coming down, so that is there's acceptance there, and then also, um, and then in terms of you know acceptance or its general, it's not so important you know what you apply it to your health, your family, but it matters the where it's coming from. So once that com things coming from and the mind comes down, just relaxing, that's what matters right? anyway. Mm -hmm. I hope that's what I'm. That's what the person is asking, or maybe something else. <laughs> yeah, perhaps a, yeah, a bit more, yeah, more specific. Yeah. I, th I think that is fine. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, Venerable, would you feel comfortable to lead us into a meditation, a guided meditation? Well, since everyone wants to talk about acceptance, that's what I guess we can do. <laughs> <laughs> can you accept it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so is that okay everyone with I guess with loving kindness to your body and then accepting you know like all the old age you know all the stuff like that yeah we can do that I hope that's okay everyone you guys are ready so I'm gonna anytime you can start right okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the light and then you guys can turn off the light and then you can you know make yourself relax to the max and then if you need to use the toilet please use the toilet you know and then it seems like everyone's ready okay so I'm gonna turn off the light first as well Give you guys a few minutes just to get ready, just to relax. If you need to use the toilet, please use the toilet. If you want to lie down, please lie down. Have that tea, whatever, it's fine as well. In fact, you don't have to meditate if you don't want to meditate as well. That's fine as well. Yeah. So. So I like I always like to start with the body uh, body scan because when your body is nice and relaxed, then the mind can just accept anything. So let's do that, okay? Just a simple body scan, and then we can do the acceptance uh, kind of meditation. So just feel the, f start from your feet. I'm sitting down on a chair, so my feet is against the carpet. So I can just feel the carpet. I brush against the sole of my feet. That softness, feel it. And always remember to put like a bit of kindness, that gentleness, and acceptance as well. Accept it. If there's pain, there's a bit of discomfort. And always patience. Ah. Move up to your leg. Feel your leg, notice any tension. And then accept it, accept that tension. And move up your knee. I have bad knees these days, so I just have to be really, really gentle, really patient when walking up the hill, down the hill, 
squatting down. Yeah, I wish I didn't have any knee problems, but unfortunately I do, so just accept it. And those of you who have knee problems probably might also understand what I'm talking about. So just remember put that kindness, that gentleness, that acceptance, that forgiveness as well. For the body to do their thing, for the knees to do their thing. Which is to age, to wear, to tear. But that's okay. If you have that gentleness, that acceptance, well, that pain just disappear. I can just feel the knees relaxing. And then move you to your thighs. feels a bit squashed. So I'm just gonna relax them. Oh, that felt so nice. So thank you. your hips. I don't have too much problem with the hips, but I know a lot of people does. A lot of the monks as well. So make sure you put a lot of kindness, that gentleness, that acceptance. To your hips. And also that gratitude. So thank you, hips, for taking care of, taking care of me. Now in this meditation, you can just relax. You don't have to support the body. And then move to your lower back. Again, I don't have problem with the lower back, but a lot of people do. So forgive your lower back for giving you so much pain, if you do have lower back pain. I know it's unpleasant, so painful at times. But please forgive your back one more time. You can, you can learn so much from that pain, that acceptance. If there is no pain, no suffering, no anicca, no impermanence, no, nothing's unsure, then you won't learn anything. Everything will be too beautiful. So thank you, lower back, for giving me so much pain. Thank you so much. And you can feel your lower back relaxing, your body relaxing as well, and your mind relaxing as well, just from that simple attitude of accepting, or that forgiving. So thank you, Sky, and thank you, Nikki, for asking those topics. Great topics, acceptance, and forgiveness.
Move up to your back. Feel your back. Be kind to your back. Move up to your neck. Feel my neck a bit squash, so I'm gonna stretch it a bit. Again, that felt so nice. Remember, just to accept the neck, accept the body, and work with it. Once accept, you accept pain, accept suffering, and then you can work with anything. And then to your shoulder, accept that tenseness, if there's tenseness. If it's already loose, also, also accept it. So thank you. Feel your hands, fingers. Your arms, and here you can be very grateful to your arms, to your hands. Without them, we can't drive to work. You can't drive to work. You can't type with that keyboard. You can't even eat. You can't cook. So here. Be extremely grateful to your hands, to your arms. So thank you, hands. Thank you there. Thank you, hands. Thank you, arms, for being there all the time. Now move down to move up to your face, to your mouth, here. I always like to pause and make a smile. Because that always helps to uplift the mind. Give it a shot. Just make a smile. A smile to your private joke. A smile to your loved ones. And a big smile to your heart. 
for singing to you. Singing bliss. Singing happiness. Singing joy. And move up to your eyes. A lot of tenseness in my eyes because I have to work on the computers early on. All I have to do is just accept that tenseness. And that tenseness just blurs away, disappear, just like butter. Just butter, you put it in a hot stove, just melt like that. Feel that warmth surrounding your eyes, relaxing them. And then move up to your the top of your head. Imagining opening up your head, taking out your brain, and putting it on a sofa. Imagine that anxiety, that worries, that concern that accumulates and throughout the day also slowly melts away once you accept them. So thank you for visiting worries. Thank you for visiting anxieties. After a while, you just realize once they are accepted, they become your friends. They turn to bliss, that joy. And that's all about what meditation is all about. Meditation is about acceptance, that loving kindness, that patience, and that mindfulness will always come with that. When there's kindness, there's acceptance, there's always mindfulness, and there's stillness. So I'm going to be quiet for a while and then let you enjoy the peace. Thank you for joining us.
So, I'm gonna ring the bell three times. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and welcome back. Everyone's okay? <laughs> I think we're all well. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're still here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, oh. Thank you, Gloria, for the hearts. <laughs> beautiful, Gloria. Thank yeah. you. So, if you guys have any more questions or you just want to have a break, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, Gloria. But yeah, sure. like, um, the first 12 years of my life, I, like in the past, I basically, I, I think I remember only 2% of it. Yeah. And a large, a large chunk of it is like disappeared. And no yeah. matter how I try to like, mem like remember it, I just cannot, I just cannot remember anything. Right. But recently, like during meditation, I, I actually feel like those memories like, a, a, a little bit of them is coming back. Of course, and yeah. Now, <laughs> yes, and ten, I think ten to fifteen percent of it. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like um, the basis of my mind is very fragmented. If does, yeah. if that makes sense, like mm -hmm. I, I just cannot. I don't know how to say, but it it feels like very fragmented. Mm -hmm. And even with those memory come back, I still feel very fragmented and sometimes like doing meditation I feel like my psyche is <laughs> breaking down yes uh, it's not exaggerating it's like it really feels like it's breaking down yeah. and um, the first question is like is a, is it a kind thing to do to break down your psyche because I cannot tell it myself is like, is it a good thing or is it like a kind thing to do to break down the psyche? This is the first question. And sure. I, yeah, and then I have the second one is like, um, because I remember in the past I asked Adam Brown, like, um, how to connect to other people because I don't think I, like, literally connected to people in any sense before. Um, it's weird, but re recently I realized that I cannot maintain relationship. I thought it's my problem for that, but I recently come to realize that it is because I just cannot feel the connection. Like mm. uh, when I look into people's eye, it's like my brain doesn't work. Yeah. Like when I when I look into their eyes and they're talking to me and I'm talking to them and, and my brain is like, it doesn't work. Like I'm using my intellectual yeah. to work on that. Yeah. And then, um, because of that, I don't know how to connect with myself because myself is like basically, it's not, I don't think it's like completely non-existent, mm. but it's like very fragmented and then I just don't know like how to, I mean, how, how do you connect with Unify. <laughs> to Unify, Unify the, body, the body yeah. and the meaning of life, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Like, I, I oh, saw this. people, like, mm. more people are, like, doing it, like, very easily, and then they're talking <laughs> to their friends, they're yeah. making connection, and, sure. and my, brain, like, my brain is like, what does that even mean? 
And that means you should become a nun, disconnecting to the world, which is excellent. Really? It would take it easy. Yeah, definitely. So Damasa is recruiting. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, no, so, no, so no, if no. you want, I, yep. Okay. Sorry about yeah, that. But, mm. I, but I, I, mm. I really would like to ask: Does yeah. that mean this this making connection with yourself during meditation, just like you observe your body, or or you be kind to yourself? Exactly. So now I know because if you intellectualize, it makes sense, right, to you. But have you felt it? That kindness. That's why I like to talk. If it works, there's that peace. There's always that stillness and things unifying. It's not fair maintained in the mind anymore. The mind feels unified. So that's the thing. So we have to keep experimenting, Gloria. So keep coming back, coming here, and then keep asking questions. Basically, that forgiveness it makes your mind great. It unifies the mind. All those fragments disappear. It just turns into one, and it feels great. So just keep exploring, and it feels. <laughs> don't worry. You have it inside of you. Or you just need just a bit more kindness. So accept it. Accept it being uh, fragmentary. It's not a big problem, you know. It's just the way you kind of respond to it. You you don't like it. That's why you're trying to shy. You're trying to make it something what you think is the right thing to do. Actually, once you accept it, the mind just unifies on itself. So the mind wants to do that, but the thing is, you have to accept it. That accepting that uh, the mind being fragmentary that brings splitting so of it. So you don't try to piece it together. You can try, but it makes things more, you know, breaks apart a bit more, you know, finer, and then you have to collect it more, <laughs> spend more energy to. So the key is just to let it, leave it alone. Just relax. Max, yeah. It's okay, you're doing great, Gloria. <laughs> I think you're being harsh. It's also the thing, people are always too fault finding on themselves. You know, there's the guilt. You know, people, people, yeah. Oh my goodness. So, how do I convince people not to go that way? So, that's one of, you know, <laughs> the hardest thing being a monk. Yeah. So, you're doing great, every single one of you. That's the thing. How do I convince that? I, I try my best, but the, the thing is, you have to do it yourself. Accept yourself. Yeah. And then the mind will unify. And then that bliss, yeah. But again, it needs a bit of training. That's all it needs to be, yeah. Training. So you did great. I see you all the time here, and this is my third talk, and I see you always here, so thank you. <laughs> and what was the first question again? Was, did I answer your second question? Kind of. Uh, yes, the first question is like, uh, do you, it's breaking down your psyche. Like sometimes I meditate, I would feel like my psyche is breaking down. And then mm. I'm, I'm like, is it a good thing? Does it lead to peace? No, but I, I it, didn't feel like I've ever felt peace. So okay. I'm just I, okay. <laughs> In that case, just... I would say accepted, but I've been using that word all the time. So how do you point to that way? Opening the door of your heart, does it work for you? That word, does it that direction? No. Do you have something that you love in something, maybe a plant, a cat? A plant? A cat? Yeah, a plant. Uh, Favorite thing? I, a teddy? I think I love animals to a certain sense. Right. I get. So you can ha use that as your object, maybe panda, whatever you like. What kind of animals do you like? Um. Cat. Okay, excellent. And then just feel how the fur against your hands and how the cat just accepts you. How do you feel? They don't. <laughs> they, don't. They, just, they just like, they, just like, they want me to leave them alone. Excellent. Okay, you can come here and pet the monks. Like, okay, you can't pet the monks, but... <laughs> but yeah, just that... You have to find that, emo kind of, I guess that everything is after a while, it's not about the intellectuals. I think, you know, that love, all that, just words. That emotional component, that's a difficult thing. You know, that's Ajahn Brahm so great, you know, with his stories, connecting to the people. So yeah, you just have to keep, unfortunately, with your mind, you, you have to, you grow up with your mind, right? So you have to accept it. And then you have to, yeah, just different kind of challenges. So. Look forward to it. It's a nice homework, you know, after a while, it, it feels great, there's peace. And you like, you want to have that peace, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I know what mm -hmm. Thank you. Just a bit of training, Gloria, that's all it needs, yeah. So, but 
so far you're doing great, okay? Just keep, you know, following us. Keep listening to Ajahn Brahm. Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Or maybe you have an Ajahn Brahm, uh, you know, like doll. You can pet Ajahn Brahm. <laughs> like you have a lot of respect for him, right? So imagine him like, ah, Ajahn Brahm. Like they're so soft. If you, if you see him in person, oh man. Yeah, you should come. And then, yeah, this Ajahn Brahm. I think, I think, I should, I think I should email BSWA to have, that, to have them make. Yeah, I think Hong Kong people, they have their own dolls or something, or maybe the Indonesian, something like that. I'm pretty sure there's in the likeness. Oh, yeah, just connect to your Hong Kong kind of coordinators, I think. I forgot his name again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he can. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Okay, Gloria. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would <laughs> like to admit and ask a question? Oh, that's a there's a dog with Joseph and T. Hi, Joe. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's a dog waving. Okay, hi. <laughs> cool. You guys, everyone's ready to quit. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, would, you, Binder, would you like to go ahead, uh, please, Pinder? Okay. Not a question. It's just an observation. Can you speak louder? Sorry, uh, Pinder, I can't really hear you. Okay, I'll come close. Yes, please, thank um, you. At, uh, at the deep, deep center, Bodhinyana, yeah. we have loads and loads of teddy bears. Yeah. And people can pick them up yeah. and sit with them. So if, if an animal doesn't want to sit with you, then people find comfort with that. They have, <laughs> so where are you going to go? Exactly. Uh, uh, teddy bear, and then yeah. after that, maybe you can progress to a cat, or maybe a plant first. <laughs> <laughs> the plant doesn't die in two months, then yep. you can progress to a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Exactly. Yes. So just whatever works, you know, that give that emotional component of acceptance, that that peace. So whatever works, Gloria. Yeah. So thank you, Pinder, for uh, chiming in. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, Christelle, would you like to unmute? Oh, hi, Christelle. Hello, Christelle. Um, I've got a question about meditation. Yes, sure. Um, so for many, many years, I would say this decades, I didn't like meditating. And I was very uh, negative. Yes. I was very finding uh, to myself for right. not sticking to the breath or whatever. Yes. And now, uh, now that's not the case anymore. Yeah. I can really relax to the max. Yeah. But what happens is that I relax so much that most of the time I fall asleep. So yeah. I watch my thinking and my processes of yeah. feelings so body part. Yeah. But then after a while, I relax so much that I fall asleep. So. Shall I just accept it and fall asleep and then see? Or exactly. What? Is that a bad thing? Falling asleep? It feels more relaxed, right? And that means just your body a bit tired or something. So that's what usually happens. And then you wake up and then just keep continuing relaxing and the mind just blisses out. Usually it just, it's always happened also to the monks, you know, Ajahn Brahm. If you notice if you, you know, on Nolamara, whatever, you follow him, sometimes you fall asleep. You just so relax and he just wakes up and then yeah. It's just okay. It's okay. It's just, um, Remember, the body is out of control, as you know, out of control. So if the body wants to fall asleep, that's okay. That means great. Would you rather be falling asleep or being restless all the time? <laughs> that tends to exactly. So falling asleep, actually, Ajahn Brahm says it's not a hindrance. Actually, it's just the mind, you know, just recuperating its energy. So great job. So yeah, as long as you get that kindness, which is great. That's all. That's all meditation is all about. Yeah, sleepiness is not a big deal. Mm. Good job. Thank you. Uh, Sandro, would you like to unmute? Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, I want to make a follow-up question about sure. this one. Um, if you don't give enough energy, maybe you go to sleep, and maybe yeah, you're tired and that's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. But uh, I found in my meditation practice that uh, if I don't give enough energy, hmm. my mind doesn't go to sleep, it hmm. becomes dull, hmm. and it 
actually uh -huh. uh, gives I'm losing energy. Excellent. And for yeah. me, it's uh, yeah, crazy to think that mm -hmm. if you imply more energy, then you feel more ah. at ease because if you control. It. Yes. And now my question is mm. how uh, how to find the balance between being dull and being too restless. Uh, how to find that uh, perfect line in okay, letting go is the best one. Yes. I found out, but. Yeah. Sometimes the lay life can be really uh, um, tiresome, and yeah, maybe you definitely. can't let go at first. Yeah. Then is it maybe that uh, via situational awareness, once you are in that lay life, mm. that can prove much better, like a standing point for meditating and letting go. No. Is, is that right to you, maybe? Yeah. Correct, yes. Lay life. Actually, it's very tiring. You notice, right? You have to work all those conditions. You have to be on time. You have to please everyone else. Oh my goodness. So it's normal, Sandro. So you get, you get tired from that. So yeah. it's okay. So because meditation is actually about leaving the world. So actually, you're doing great, you know, trying to be mindful and all that. But again, try to have that kindness as well. So try to accept that, you know, that dullness and both uh, dullness and uh, restlessness. And then they just should give it a shot, okay? Have you tried that? Just when there's restlessness, just open it. Do you know how it feels, so the acceptance, that heart opening up? So just be with yeah. it, just relax it. Perfect. So you know how it feels like, so you don't just understand the words, you actually know the emotional component. So perfect. So that's your training right there. So I'm just brainwashing you. So whenever there's dullness or restlessness, all you do is just open up your heart. That opening, that being kind, that just being there, just being patient, accepting, yeah. That restlessness, so thank you for coming. And then thank you, anxiety, thank you, dullness. But the key is you have to remember that, the instruction. So I'm just inputting it into your brain, so. So good luck, okay? Give it a shot and let me know later, okay? Mm -hmm. Eddie, would you like to unmute and go ahead? Hey, Eddie. Yes. <laughs> Hello. 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 Apa kabar? Apa kabar? Baik-baik saja. I actually have a follow-up question. Um, and having the same issue as Crystal and Sandra, I guess. Mm. So the thing is that I feel like I've been attacked by both sides. Like when I when I meditate, I Excellent. I often find myself feeling sleepy as well. Yeah. If I'm not sleepy, I feel like I'm keep thinking about. Yeah. What to do next after this? Yep. So there's a to do list that pop up on my mind constantly. Okay. Okay. That's only two hindrances. There are five hindrances. So good job. You only have two hindrances. <laughs> okay. But it happens so okay, uh, so so often, so frequently. Yeah. Like yeah. this past six months. Yeah. So if I'm not sleepy, then there's a kind of to do list here. Yeah. Like A B E until Z, and yep. I don't know what to do with that. Yeah. So. Asking that, how should I process this? Exactly, how what I... we've been talking about. Do you remember the acceptance? Can you accept that the mind going crazy? That's the hard part, right? It's because you think it's your mind and you should be able to control it. After all, it's my mind, right? But after all, I just realized. So I'm just telling you, the mind is not yours. You can tell it, you don't want to think this, but it doesn't work, right? You try your best and you're a smart guy it doesn't work. You know why? Because it's not yours. It's not. It's out of control. Once you get that inside of you, and you do, you just accept it. Once the acceptance happens, wow, lo and behold, the mind just does what you wanted it to do, which is basically just relaxing, just, yeah. So give it a shot, okay? When the mind goes haywire, yeah, just relax it a bit. Just accept it. Yeah. Do it. Uh, do we actually need to choose the, the time to meditate or things like that? Any strategies about? No, any time. So whenever the, fa the mind's mm -hmm. being restless, just remember, just accept it, just opening it. Again, you have to know that emotional component. Have you felt it? Yeah, that uh, the mind opening up, that patience. So once you get that, that's the key. So that's the training right there, just the mind opening up. Just the, uh, yeah, that Mick Mickey with Mickey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just open up like that. <laughs> open up your heart right there. 
So yeah, if you can remember that, that's great. That's all the training you need. Just open up your heart, make your heart great. And then, yeah, good stuff happens, yeah. And then no hindrances, not even one, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Venerable. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Is there anyone else who would like to unmute? Oh, Penda, thank you. Can you just unmute? Sorry, it's just uh, an observation again, uh, Venerable. Um, sure, please chime and, uh, in. John Brown's uh, example when you start off the meditation, you have two bags in your hands, and the left hand you've got your past. That one down. Yeah. Relation and in right hand you've got the future. Mm. Right, put that one down. Mm. And I used to find that useful if you for some time ago. Um, because as Eddie was saying, with his like so it used to be thoughts that come. Yeah. And now I'd say, oh, right, that's a thought in the past. Yeah. So that goes that bag goes Yeah. Down. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. And then I really find my thumb for about a few seconds from and then another thought comes in. It's the future. All right, I'll put it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Who yeah. goes down the drain? They are on the ground. Yeah. That's the Yeah. And you notice that letting go is also acceptance. You know, you accept there's a baggage, there's a heaviness, and it just let it automatically. That letting go, you don't have to let it go. It's just it automatically because you're patient with it. See, all you, this is all those words just converging on the same thing. I don't know if there's a common word, whatever. Yeah, so just loving kindness, acceptance, letting go. Yeah, basically what Jim Brown says, make peace, become, be gentle. It's all the same thing. Yeah. So we're basically teaching you guys the same thing over and over and over again. I just remember we talking like thousands of talks for same what? The same thing. Acceptance, letting go, make your peace. And that's it. And then what Ajahn Brahm's most impressive got where it's coming from. So you know he masters kind of that, you know, letting go, that kindness. And you can feel it. And that's what you need, all of you needs to be, you know, if you like to train that heart. And then, yeah, you can be another Ajahn Brahm, Ajahn Crystal, Ajahn Eddie, Ajahn Sanro, Ajahn Sky, Ajahn Ikea. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah, mm, definitely. If not this lifetime, next lifetime, you can just, yeah. Being a monastic is awesome. Yeah, definitely. There's no downside. Yeah, I don't see any downsides in here. Upsides, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Pinder, for chiming in again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sky got a cat. <laughs> okay. Gloria, did you see that? Sky has a cat. Yeah. Awesome. I'm done, Kitty. Oh, Kitty. <laughs> What's her name? Max. Max. So there you go. Max. Uh, Maxwell. Yep. Max and Gloria. <laughs> Uh, I think we're just about there. Sandra, would you like to unmute for a last comment? Yeah. Uh, well, how can you explain that release that you get when you finally understood the acceptance part and uh, when you understand that, okay, I'm feeling like this because of that. Mm -hmm. When you understand the various conditions, how can you explain that release that happens immediately and everything is like uh, going well all of a sudden. I don't know, an example would be uh, in meditation when the thoughts only come and come, they bombard you and when you finally, I don't know how, understand to just let them go, everything just vanishes. Boom. Hmm, excellent. How, okay. how can you explain that release? Um, because it's really I don't know, uh, I'm trying to find certain like checkpoints in the in the training on the path mm. and that release is the ultimate checkpoint for me. Mm. So is that maybe right to you uh, regarding that release? Okay, so that checkpoints is always that piece. Is that what you're asking? So what you want to know if it's working? Okay, yeah, just that piece, that uh, stillness. And then the mind opening up, it's, it feels a bit different, yeah. And that's it. That's all the checkpoints you need. So you feel great. You feel kind of relaxed. I think you're doing great. Yeah. So 
tech points. Yeah, it's not <laughs> necessary after a while. You're doing great. So, yeah. Well, Venerable, I think we've come to the end of the evening. Would you be happy to offer everyone a blessing this evening? Yes, please accept and then forgive always one more time. <laughs> and just keep opening up your heart, just like Nikki says. You guys can do like this. Take your heart right there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Your, my last message. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. There you go. So thank you, everyone. So I'll see you another time, okay? Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. Thank take you. care, Chris. Thank yeah. you, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. See you. See you. Ciao, ciao.